Hey everyone, it's James from Blizzard Lighting. This is the fourth video in our Eclipse DMX Software 101 videos. Um, this video, we're just kind of go over a couple different things. You know, I'm gonna quickly show you, um, you know, how to stack sequences, uh, how to record uh, individual sequences so that way you can stack them together. Uh, for playback, and you can use these individual sequences on top of anything else that's playing. Uh, whether you originally intended for it to or to be played on top of that particular one or not, it's just a really good way to mix things up visually and uh, very easily uh, on the fly. So I actually went ahead and created a blue and white sequence for the uh, flare cues. And so that is recorded as just a uh, color global save. So if you really want to hit the uh, save seems as button, you get color global only. So that's what I did for that. So it's saving just the RGBW channels. So now, say I have a sequence that I want to create for a pan and tilt movement. I could do Release to INIT, go to my joystick, circle, speed this up a little bit, just step shift to, there we go, it looks a little bit better. It's about half now. What we could do is actually, if we wanted to resize this to make it look more like a circle again, we could even take our mouse here, right click it, and move move the center of the effect around the DMX grid. So, pretty neat. Um, so, so now we have our movement going, we can unselect these and select just our IS-30s here. Go over to the faders. Click on color. Click on effects and uh, effects 1 through 20 we can do color chase so uh, you know your your spots are doing something alongside of the the washes in terms of changing colors and you don't have to do it step by step you know say you just simply wanted to chase from white to red or from red to blue or even green So, white, red, blue, green, etc. You know, it's just an example. So, we can now create the chase. It's going to do it from step 1 through step 20, which is fine because we already have that set up as per the 20 steps or your scenes that are already occurring in the uh, pen and tilt sequence. So, we can hit create chase. And that's going to create that chase on the ice 30s force. Right, we can go back in, select all these, and see what's going on. You know, and what we can do now is uh, we can save this sequence as you know, default or color global only. Uh, since we actually combined pan and tilt and color, we can't really do both, so we're going to leave it as default. So, we can go ahead and name this, um, circle, red, green. Save sequence. So, what we can do now is, you know, these are going to be doing their little movement around stuff. So, click on it programming, just like these, you'll see that they're moving around and stuff like that. Uh, you'll see that the ice fixtures are doing their color sequence, but the flare cues aren't doing anything. So what we can do, hold down control, hit flurry, hit blue-white flurry, and now those are doing their sequence together. But 
notice that the fire cues are still doing their their movement. You know, I just have all eight of these little dots on the, the joystick here. It's because we stacked the two sequences together. You know, say say we even did you know like light blue. That's gonna override the flare cues and also turn on the puck three nexus. You know, it's all about which order you select stuff in. So if you had light blue selected first, and then circle the green, you're gonna get the circle going again. The ice pictures are gonna do their color chase. So the cues are gonna be on cyan, and the puck three nexus will come on also on cyan. So the, one of the, the, the coolest things about the software though is the ability to have your sequences triggered by audio detected from either the sound card on the computer or from an external microphone. You could even take a line out of audio console or uh, a line out signal from a mobile DJ setup break. And if you can, if your sound card on the computer accepts, you know, uh, audio input through the headphone jack, you can have these scenes trigger to the BPM that the computer is hearing through the sound card or the microphone. And so, what's really cool about that is you can set just the circle to audio. You'll be able to see it by the button being green. So red is off, green is on. So you can do settings. You know, we're going to use the uh, front microphone. Start audio in. Now, since I don't have any music playing, you really can't see anything. Uh, however, you can tap tempo it. automatically adjust uh, threshold you can even manually do tempo speed stuff like that volume sensitivity so anything that has the green speaker or the speaker button and, and the screen will automatically be linked to this BPM detect function down here which is really really cool I mean I had you know, it's super easy. You just you know find your scene that you want to link it to. Boom, turn it on. Boom, start audio in or start tapping out the beat. If you do audio in, these little numbers here: zero, two, four, eight, sixteen. What that's going to allow you to do is, if you have uh, like for example the flare cubes, uh, if those are linked to a pan and tilt sequence that are, that's being triggered by the BPM. Um, you can have it have just that sequence uh, skip, you know, every two beats, every four beats, eight beats, sixteen beats. So that way your your movers don't just you know start shaking and going crazy. It looks really erratic. That'll slow down the beat detect and smooth out your movements for you. And if you you know if you have your color chasing sequences or whatever. A separate cue not linked to audio, uh, that won't be affected either. So it's it's really a good way to, uh, you know, for moving heads and stuff like that to just uh, still go to audio but not be so erratic. So it's really 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 cool toy, uh, really cool toy and tool to have and to play with. Um, you know, it's really interesting to see what different styles uh, react to the, the beat. Um, there's settings for response time, which is low, medium, high, extreme, trigger type, BPM adjust per trigger, BPM adjust with averaging, threshold, music style, you know, you have a lot of music styles in here too, and just stuff like that. I mean, it's really the best way is to, you know, set up, set up some stuff, record some sequences, play some music check it out. So, also we have lock. 
So I cannot turn this button off if I tried. Unless I unlock it. Turn it on, lock it, and it's never coming off. And if you have a password password uh, function set up, that can even help it further stay on. Um, all right, well, that's that's pretty much it for for video number four. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comments, mm -hmm. or shoot us an email at support at blizzardlighting.com. Thanks, guys.